State your appearances, please. For the record, Tom Ellis, appearing on behalf of the plaintiff. Your name? Travis Ackerman. Thank you, Nelson. Thank you. All right. Take time for the adjourned trial date. Um, are we ready to proceed? Where you said you see, ready to write in. You saw the part of the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and not the truth. So, God. yes. Did you at one time enter into a rental agreement with the defendants? Yes. I believe the court has a copy of the lease agreement. I have a copy of the lease agreement that's dated December 27, 2022. That is correct. What was the rental agreement for that house? Rent the house and the attached garage. No, none of the other buildings. And we paid which would be twelve hundred dollars a month. And they were I had I had purchased the uh, propane and they were to reimburse me for the propane in the tanks. And the tanks would be refilled again in the summer. The cheapest rate is a summer fill. And they would pay for that after the it, uh, it was and when they moved in at the end of December, did you go out and read the capacity of the tanks at that time? On the day they moved, well, actually, January 1st, I believe. I think Travis went with me, but I'm not positive on that. Read the tanks, wrote it down, and calculated what, how many gallons were in each tank. So, what was your understanding with the defendants as to the propane? And the cost of that program. We read the gauges on the three tanks there, two one thousands and one five hundred. We read the gauges, calculated the gallons. The price was set when we bought when I bought the propane in uh, summer of twenty two. The uh, the balance, Travis and I read the tank and we calculated it. And I told them they didn't have to pay it immediately, that they would pay it over some period of time, like you know, maybe 300 a month. I'm not sure the number was given. But it turns out they didn't pay anything on it. Okay. The, tank, the tanks were filled again in the summer of 23. So, how much money is owing to you for propane that was used by the defendants? Well, after calculating both what was in the tank and then adjusting for the what's left in the tanks when they moved out and giving credit for the three payments that his mother and stepfather made, eighteen hundred and eighty-nine dollars and two cents is still owed. How, how much of that is the amount of propane that was in the tank initially? Uh, Fourteen hundred eighty gallons were in the tanks when they moved in. And how much was in tanks when they moved out? Nine hundred fifteen gallons was left in the tanks when they moved out. Yes, you may approach my bench. Okay, my it's not the way it works here, Council. You asked to approach. This front sheet, sir, when did you, when was this created, this handwritten sheet? Just before our last hearing, roughly three weeks ago. Was there ever an agreement with you and the defendants in regards to reducing the rent if they paid the propane? Yes. In January, I believe, we had a Kind of a one-way heated discussion on the phone, and then, with long story short, I agreed to a lesser rent, and they were going to move out by May first. Contingent on it. prior to that, his mother had told me that she would pay, and, and John would pay the uh, propane bill, and they did pay five hundred in December, five hundred in January, five hundred in February, and the payment stopped. As far as I'm concerned, the agreement was void after that because it was contingent on continuing to be get the propane tank. So, what was the agreement? The agreement that I, I would allow them to pay half rent for four months 
and the understanding they would be out by the first of May. That's contingent on, and the mother had already said that she would pay the propane. And they did, like I said, they did make three payments. How much were they supposed to make? They were just, they were going to pay what they could afford, 500 or so. It was not an exact amount until it was paid off. The first month they paid 500, December, January they paid 500, February they paid four. Until what was paid off? The, the complete uh, propane bill. Did they know what that bill was? Yes. How did they know what the bill was? I'm sure I told them to show them. Okay. So and what did you show them, I guess, is what I'm trying to figure out. Well, it would, I don't have the paper in front of me, but it'd be a calculation like you have on the front page of our exhibit of the, of the propane that was there when they moved in. Propane that was there okay. when they. I, I get you. But was there a document that you showed them that told them what they should pay? Can't say for sure. I assume there was. I mean, I'm sure they would have asked for it. Did you know the amount that was owing? At that time, we did not know what was going to be left in the tanks when they moved out. But the amount that was in there when they moved in and the amount that was added in August or the summer of 23, those totals were there. And there was going to be a correction made, an adjustment. Okay, but out. here's my question How would they know what to pay? The original bill wasn't paid of uh, approximately $2,800. Okay. That wasn't paid. So there's at least that much had to be paid. And then the refill of the bank was approximately $1,700 in the, in the summer. It, would you tell them that's never happening again? Okay. So, trying to understand this, there's an agreement that they will pay. And their parents are going to help them pay, right? Yes. Okay. Part of this agreement is, is that their rent would be 50%, correct? Well, but part of the agreement is, is that the rent is 50%. The other part of that is that they will pay the propane, right? Yes. But how do I know that they defaulted on that if I don't know the amount they were to pay? Mr. Samanek, how much money was owing for propane in January when you talked to him about this? Okay, so how do they know that? I believe I showed them and told them. They have copies or had copies of these invoices. All right. Here I show you a list of exhibits with our pictures of your house. You, some of those exhibits show the paint job that they did in your house. Yes. And you took those pictures. I did. And do they accurately reflect the condition of your house? Yes. These pictures were taken after they... The day after, I believe the day after they moved out. Okay. I would move for the admission of the exhibits there. The pictures, I believe the defendants have copies of those pictures. Including the ones that are online for okay. everybody interested in renting house. Hey, may I approach the bench and give the exhibits of the pictures? Yes. Yeah. What exhibit number is this? Pardon me? What exhibit numbers? The exhibit numbers are exhibit one through 
they, they have, they're not consecutive numbers. Exhibit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 17. So one through nine in exhibit 17. Yes, sir. All right. Do, do those pictures show the walls of various colors at one time? Pictures show partial paint jobs of several doors and walls that the, somebody had taken a roller and put a dark blue color or dark color, a couple of swipes with probably to test the color, several places, and then they're never complete. And another picture shows a room that's painted some color of red that I know I did not approve. And I did not approve the dark blue color. Did you repaint that house or those rooms which they put that paint on? It's or did not, you hire somebody to do the it? The job is being done. It's not totally done yet. How much money have you spent on the repainting? Over seventeen hundred dollars for paint and labor, and it's not done. Who's doing the painting? And they brought Reese and his wife, Sherry Reese. Is there a bill? I have an estimate for seventeen hundred dollars, and that's what it is. It's an estimate. I have another estimate. Where's the estimate? I'm sorry. Do you have that estimate with you here? What provision are, is plaintiff relying on regarding the painting? In the complaint? No, in the lease. Or damage to the premise? Sir, was it going to be painted anyway? I mean, after they moved out, wouldn't you repaint before you rented? Was there difficulty in repainting because of the dark colors? Yes, it required three coats over the... the uh, did you do the painting? I did not do it myself. Well, how is he going to testify to that, counsel? Were you present to see what was going on? I was there every day as they were there. I watched what they were doing. Physically not able to do all that work. Right, I, I get that, but are the painters going to be here to testify? No, because I mean, all of this is hearsay. Well, he can testify as the amount of money he's paying to have something done. Maybe, but he's also saying he's got a contract and the necessity of it being done, they have a right to challenge. I don't have the painters. Here. I mean, they're the ones telling him that's what needs to be done. Or am I missing something? He's relying upon his knowledge of what paint looks good and what paint doesn't look good and how he can solve the problem. I don't even know what that means. Somebody is coming in and doing the work. He's talking about what they're doing and the necessity to do that. That's all hearsay, unless I have them here because they're the ones doing. I believe. Okay, we'll move on. Then. When the when they moved in, was there any discussion about the house and the barns and the farmland surrounding that house? Yes, I told him that I have a farmer that farms the land. He will be going through the driveway, coming in and out. They have irrigation on that farm, and especially in the summer months, he would be in there pretty frequently. My son has, he has, has and had equipment stored in some of the buildings, and another neighbor has hay stored in some of the buildings, and I have tractors stored in some of the buildings. And I... I so Travis said that what he has is the use of the house and the detached garage, not the other buildings. Did Travis ever give you a forwarding address of where he was moving? Not right. Okay. Did he ever give you a forwarding address? 
I assume he moved in with his mother and stepfather. Not the question. Did he give you a forwarding address? No. Go ahead, Ken. So, in summary, then, what money is owed to you? Months are in it. Of twelve hundred dollars per month. What months are those for? March and April. Two hundred ninety-three dollars and sixty-six cents for the electric bill. Eighteen hundred eighty-nine dollars and two cents for the program. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back to a question that I had that I didn't get an answer to. What lease provision is he relying upon regarding the painting? Is that the one that plaintiff's relying upon, counsel? Paragraph seven. I'm talking about paragraph seven of the lease, which provides. That's, that's about improvements and alterations to the premises. Yes. Normally, that's applicable to fixtures. What provides that to plaint? I, I don't. Well, I'll let you make your argument at some point as to how that's applicable to painting, but go ahead. Yeah, I have no further questions to this with. I love Jeff Crooks right here. I'm sorry, I've never done this before. Right so. um, Mr. Samanak, are you familiar with section nine of the lease agreement that we both signed access to premises? So can can you tell me exactly who within, you know, you mentioned that there were multiple parties coming in and out of the private drive. Um, what what part of that is within section nine as, as being agreed upon? First of all, it's not a private drive. Okay, so beside the point, uh, access to premises. Um, it says landlords or their agents shall have free access within reasonable hours to the lease premises for the purpose of examining or exhibiting the premises to prospective buyers or tenants or for making alterations or repairs. Is there any language that states exactly what you had just specified about farmers coming in with equipment? So the landlord has free access to make the landlord to make uh, repairs alterations or to show prospective buyers were you doing any of that were they doing any of that for every document hold on you yes. got one question let him in yes your honor yes sure. your honor for, my other tenants that pre, should have free access also that main driveway so was that written written into our lease agreement that, for our awareness no i'm sure you're told about it okay you were told that the farmer would be coming through there so, especially in the summertime and and in reference to the lease agreement, what we signed, can you tell me all of the evidence that's been shared about the access to the property, if any of those are within, uh, the, like within like violation or accordance of the lease? I agreement? think what you're asking is, those individuals that are coming on and having access to the premises, do they fall within the parameters of paragraph nine? Do you I think that's what you're asking. That yes. is what we're asking, Your Honor. I believe they do. Okay. How do they do that, sir? How does, in your own words, how do their access to the premises fall within paragraph nine? Okay, first, okay. Access to the premises means, to me, means the farm. The farm, this rental house is only one piece of the farm. The farm land is a piece, and the, there's a several outbuildings there that are another pieces of the farm. So my people that rent the land from me and rent the barns from me, have access through that main driveway. They do not have access to his house or that short driveway that goes from the main driveway to his house. That's the only part that's private for them is that short driveway about 50 foot long from the main driveway up to this one car garage. That's the part that Travis did not seem to understand. Sure. Well, hold on. So what's the address there? What did they rent according to the lease? The house. No, look at the lease. I get your interpretation, and you may have an interpretation of what they rented, but what did they rent according to paragraph one? That includes that driveway, right? 
Do the barns have a different address, Mr. Sanders? Oh, man, hold on. That includes that driveway, right? If they have access to that driveway, the driveway to the house, yes. Okay, but that's the lease premises. Barns are also part of the farm. Well, that may be your other problem. Because under terms of paragraph one, they lease that entire premises, didn't they? The understanding was at the time when we talked about it, they leased the house and and attached garage. That's it. Paragraph one. I understand what you're saying is the understanding. But paragraph one says precisely that they are renting the does anywhere in there say anything about the lease premises or about the the house or in let me put it another way does anything in the leasing agreement exclude anything on that property? does it specifically say anything about the no 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 that can be your interpretation of it sir you'll answer my question because my question the lease premises is that address right it doesn't exclude anything on that property so it doesn't say for example that address with the exception of the bar it doesn't say that does it doesn't say it is there any other writing that excludes any that's signed by both parties that excludes any part of that property? Go on to your next question. Your Honor, may I submit some evidence for the painting? Um, okay. What do, you, what do you have? We have a listing that they had made to rent the house out. And all of the photos show the existing paint, showing that no painting has been done as of what, March yeah, was, May 23rd. Yeah, the last update was May 23rd. With no update of photos. In, in the same but time. it shows the existing photo, the existing paint in the exhibits that they submitted to you. Have you seen that, Council? No, I haven't. Today she has pictures, but oh, it's, you have a copy. It was provided to you in the middle of the folder. Do you have them? Yes, well, he does. Do you have yeah. any objection to those photos? I would object to them, Your Honor, in that that is something off the internet in May. I would think if they're supposed to be cross examining this witness, why don't we ask him when they started the painting? Who put that on the internet? His associate, Melissa. Well, hold on a moment. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Counsel, I gave you great leeway in terms of your questions that elicited hearsay. And now you want me to. Do that with them. I guess you we can accept because hold it. it because counsel, if you want to play it that way, we can play it that way. Because here's the deal: anything regarding that painting, they don't need to provide anything to you because all of that is hearsay. The bill is hearsay. The agree, all of that's hearsay because I don't have anybody here. So if that's the way we want to do it, I'll strike all of that. I'll deny that being admitted. How do you want to do this, counsel? You can have their pictures admitted as evidence, Your Honor. And that's what I thought. Did you have questions regarding that to you? I have no questions for that. Just wanted to state that. It has not been done. Got it. Well, let me follow up with that line of question. Sir, when was, has the, the painting has not been completed? Not has it been started? Yes. When did it start? I don't have the exact date, about, about two weeks, three weeks ago. So, is the is the house currently being rented? No. Your Honor, can I ask a question? In a moment. Did you have any other questions of this witness? Um. Yes, sir. Pardon? Yes. Go ahead. 
Um, I would also like to touch on the section five of the lease with paying the utilities. Um, Mr. Samanak, it says that we must pay the propane no later than the 31st of December of the year the propane was purchased. Mr. Samanak, when did we move into this premises? That was the exact date you signed it on the 27th of December. So it says that we our lease agreement starts January 1st of 2023. And when was the first propane purchase for that house that you're claiming? The propane that was in the tanks when you moved there mm -hmm. purchased in the summer of 22. Okay. So according to section five, where in that language does that state that we owe that propane if we did not move into the 2023? within the lease well, what does that on, state hold on her question is where in that provision sir does it say that the only place it talks about propane is in section five okay so the question then is where does it state that they would be liable for what is in the tank before then Doesn't say it in the lease. They agreed to put it before they signed the lease. Sir, if you look at paragraph five, right? The only propane that they would need to pay would be that which was purchased in the summer of 2023. Isn't that correct? That was a question. I agree to. Sir, listen closely to my question. When I'm looking at paragraph five, that paragraph basically says the only propane they need to pay for is the propane that would have been purchased in the summer of 2023. Isn't that what that says? Go on to your next question. And Mr. Samanak, I wanted to reference the conversation we had in January um, regarding the reduction of rent. Was the stipulation not that we were going to read the meters and then pay the propane appropriately once we moved out on May 1st? I don't remember you saying that you would Pay them. We agreed that we would read the propane meters and that we would figure out how much that we owed at the end of our lease. And were we given that opportunity? For that conversation, although we did talk about reading the meters when you moved out mm -hmm. and giving you credit for what was in the tank. Okay. And so, with that being said, they paid up until February when we asked to have the readers met and then we read and then we'll pay you appropriately because we did not know the amount that we owed. It was not clear due to all the handwritten letters we've gotten. You got a question, do a question. I don't need to say. Okay. Um, how would we know what we owed if we had not read the meters yet? At that point, you owned almost 100% of the bill, so there's a lot of it could have been paid. According to Section 5, we did not owe 100% of the bill. So how would we know how much we owed? until we read the meters at the end of our lease. You had to go about the numbers I gave you. Mm -hmm. Correct. And do you have a date when you would have given us those specific numbers? I know you referenced that there was a document. Uh, we don't have a document. So could you provide us with a date in January you would have done that? I believe I gave you a copy of the bill being delivered in the summer of 23. And then we made, obviously have made a $1,400 payment towards that, which you've admitted. So we have been paying on that. So when have we defaulted on paying the propane? Right now the bill's not paid yet. Okay, we're in court. So. Um, bill, again, in court. For a month and a half, two months, and paid But when did somebody give them a number? When we made it to court. 
I mean, outside of being here, when did they have a number? We were served with court documents before we even moved out, stating that we owed that much money. You gave them a number when they moved out. Shortly after Where is the writing where you gave them the number they needed to pay? It was in the original complaint. Oh, ma'am, not the court, not, it wasn't directed at the defendant. When did you give them a number? Sir? Did you give them a number in writing? Probably at our first court hearing. After a very heated one way conversation with Travis, he said he'll never pay another dime. Okay. Mr. Salmonet, can I ask what time frame that conversation took place in? Was that the call we had in April after we had already satisfied all, all payments made to you? So can you can you reference the time frame that that call was made in? Was it in April after we had already made all prorated rent and satisfied uh, propane payments to you? Hold on, okay, folks. What was the propane bill that was paid in that was that you purchased in 2023? Okay. And they paid 1500, right? Or their parents 1, paid 1500. 1400, sir. 14. Right? Mom and dad paid $1,400. Okay. So at most, then, for when I'm looking at the language of this contract, by December of 2023, they owe $300. $1,400 paid $500 in December, $500 in January. I don't care when it was paid. <laughs> here's, here's the problem that I'm having. The the lease itself indicates that the only propane that they need to pay for is that which is purchased that year. So the $1,700 purchase in 2023 needed to be paid by, according to this, by December of 2023, they needed to pay whatever that bill was, right? Whatever the, um, this is the other problem with the agreement, because I'm not sure, according to the lease, that they would be required, well, a couple of things. The propane that was purchased in 2024, right, that they used? There was no propane purchased in 24. It was on the summer of 23. And the summer of 22. Okay, so all they owe then for propane is $300. But we did not use all that was in those tanks, Your Honor. There's still 900 gallons left. Well, yeah, that's a whole other issue. But okay, go ahead with your questions. In January, uh, when we had our phone call, um, me reaching out about prorating the rent due to the multiple, the continued violations of the lease agreement that you had not acknowledged multiple times in our previous calls, did I come to you? Uh, on the basis of the violation of the lease agreement in reference to wanting to prorate the rent? Was that, was that, I mean, can you confirm that that was the nature of our conversation? A conversation one side of you screaming for about 15 minutes. 
Yes. Oh, I decided to, yeah, let you go ahead and move out. Do you have evidence what you just said of me calling you every name in the book? My wife heard it all. You, you slandered her, my, wife, my kids, everybody around my family. You okay. They bad remarks about us. Okay. Besides the point, the question that I ask you is reaching out to you, was that not on the basis of the, the, the repetitive, egregious violations of the lease agreement that you were had acknowledged but not taken any action on? You violated more, more provisions than that, lease. Only thing I've done is I did not get that passed up taken care of. I was unable to get it done. It's the only thing that I've done. Mr. Samanak, in regards to that question, do you not recall the um, videos and photos we sent you of all the pest infestations? I never got a video. My phone does not receive them. If you send them on the phone, I did not get them. Did, do you receive photos? No. No? No. Okay. Was that ever communicated to us? Okay. For sure. Go ahead. I have no further questions. No further questions, Your Honor. All right. You may proceed. I have no further questions at this point. Sir, is the house been listed? No. It was uh, put on Zillow for a few days by mistake. Um, I was not. By mistake? Yes. How did the that? The lady that put it on was going to help me, and she thought misunderstood what I told her. And she, she was going to help you do what? Try and list the house for rent. And I, there was too many things that I needed to do, and I, I told her that uh, I don't want to do it. She said, well, it's already on, so we'll take it off. She did. When was that? Sorry? When was that? I don't have the exact date, but probably a week or two after they moved out. She moved out the first of May. Do you have any pictures of the current status of the painting? I do not. I can tell you the three rooms that were. Do you have a receipt for the purchase of any materials regarding the painting? I spent approximately three hundred dollars in Menards. I'm going to go back over these figures you're indicating your own. You're saying that they owe you $1,200 for May and April. Each, yes. Total of 24, March, 20, March and April, $2,400. Yes. How much are you claiming for propane? $1,500. 1859 or $1,889? And then two ninety three sixty six for electric. Those are all your claims. Well, the painting. And the painting is how much? Seventeen? How much? I don't have the exact amount, but it's, the labor is going to be seventeen or more. Uh, what do you mean you don't have the exact amount? They've already used up about seventeen hundred. Do you have a canceled check? Anything that tells me that that's what you pay for painting? Pardon? I do not have a canceled. How do you pay them? Give them credit. It's the only money. Okay. Dear goodness. So the person doing the painting owes you money. Yes. And so you're taking they're supposedly doing this work and then you're going to take it off of their bill. Yes. So you, there's been no outlay of any monies from you to a person to paint these premises. Yes. And I don't have a bill for paint. I don't have a bill for any of that, right? Yeah, absolutely. for the like I don't, well, I, whatever that is, I don't know who, I don't know who created that estimate. I have a second estimate that's higher than that. 
<laughs> I, I don't know who these. It's okay. It's not the way this works. You're telling me that it's seventeen hundred for that, but that has you haven't paid that. Yeah. Well, that's not my question. You haven't. You have not paid that. Correct. You're saying that you bought supplies at Menards, but I don't have a receipt for that, right? So in reality, I have nothing here today that tells me anything about the painting other than what you said, right? Any additional witnesses for the plaintiff? We have no further witnesses at this time. Yes. All right, before I hear from the defendants, and I don't know if I'm necessarily going to need to hear from the defendants unless for whatever reason plaintiff wanted them called because folks, now I don't mind coming back and making the ruling, but I think the parties should try to figure out if they can resolve this without screaming and yelling at each other. And I'll give that opportunity because there's some agreement to pay half the rent. One party's claiming it's because of stuff that wasn't done on the premises. The other saying it was continued upon this propane bill, which I'm not sure that that propane bill is owed. Outside of that, whoever drafted this lease and this lease, council, as I'm sure you're aware, any ambiguity in that lease is going to be construed as against your client. And so I think you need to look at that language very closely because it's his lease. I understand. And so there's that part of it. The other and, and those ambiguities, just so that the parties are clear, are the premises that's leased and in interference with that premises because it got a problem in that in the initial paragraph. But there's no part of that lease refers to anything in the way of quiet enjoyment and use of the premise. Except by operation of law. I understand. I mean, even if it's not in there. Okay, well. So I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to try to handle some of these other cases. You guys, if you guys can talk to each other civilly, need to go out and resolve it. There's 1,200 sitting in a security deposit. I have a paint job that I'm not even sure is done or is going to be done that isn't going to be paid that somehow or another is on some credit. I've got property that they lease, which by the leasing agreement itself says they lease that whole thing. And then, goodness help us all, we have paragraph five, which is the most confusing provision regarding the payment of propane. And if you guys want me to give you my decision on that, I'll be more than happy to. But I think you guys probably should see which way the wind is blowing, go out there and try to negotiate something. If not, you'll get my call on it. I'll break on this case. Everybody else that's waiting, you got to give me about five minutes. I will come back, I promise. Maybe. <laughs> All right. Court's going to stand in recess. All right. Were the parties able to try to talk at all, or do you guys just didn't? Unfortunately, we cannot resolve the case, Your Honor. All right. I think I understand defendant's position, unless you guys wanted to testify about something. I don't think I need it necessarily to come to my decision. All right. Closing arguments. Your Honor, we have a lease agreement here that it seems as if both parties are having difficulties in interpreting that lease. But the lease is clear that changes have to be in writing. We feel that the testimony has been sufficient for the court to award a judgment for the unpaid propane. We believe the unpaid amount is 1,882, unpaid electric of 293, rent for two months, March and April of $2,400, and then we have the issue of the paint. If the court wants to disregard giving the plant any money for 
repainting. As long as we got the propane money and the back rent and the electric utilities, we would be satisfied. There's no provision in the lease that says they're gonna have quiet enjoyment or exclusive use of this premise. There's been no testimony given to the court as to why they should not pay the two months worth of rent. There was testimony that at, Mr. Samanak at one time said if they paid the propane, he would reduce the rent. The propane bill has not been paid. Even if you interpret the lease as saying that they only have to pay the propane bill on December 31st for propane that was delivered that year, there is still an unpaid balance of propane owing. So I would ask for a judgment for the expenses as we stated there, and then you can give them credit for their $1,200 in the security deposit. Closing argument. We do not feel as if we owe the propane due to the prorated rate of 900, over 900 pounds still being in the tanks um, with the $1,400 payment due, which would null and void his claim of the rent, which we have satisfied for our agreement in January. Um, and we dispute the, the charges as well. Your Honor, the, the entire basis for this was reaching out to the plaintiff in January due to multiple egregious violations of the lease agreement. Um, the plaintiff has been unwilling to, and his attorney, to review the evidence, uh, the severity of what's occurred, and why we reached out in the first place in January to prorate the rent and facilitate an exit of the lease. Um, in, in this case, we do not know that we, we satisfied the rental payments anymore, um, in accordance with what we agreed to in January, that rental uh, prorated rental payment was not predicated on propane payment in any way, shape, or form. Um, multiple parties were present for that call, and I would say that all of them can attest to the fact that that would, nothing of that nature was said. Nor did I agree personally agree as a party on the call uh, to those terms, those verbal terms. Um, so we do feel that we have satisfied uh, not only the rent um, but the propane requirements as well. Um, we do feel that there is unaddressed matters uh, with the violation of the lease agreement and why we had initiated all of this in the first place, but recognize that there's a time and a place to address those matters as well. And we move for our deposit fee paid back to us in full. All right. The court has listened to the testimony and read the pleadings and frankly, the Defendant's position is rather straightforward. They acknowledge that they owe the two ninety three. I think it was two ninety three sixty six, which are the utilities. So that's the easy one. The uh, next rather easy one. But in the court's going to make its own finding on this, and that is, is that the what both parties agree on is that for those two months, there was a an agreement for basically a fifty percent rent reduction. Um, one party says it's because of what were the conditions of the premises and regarding use of the premises, that being the defendant. And the plaintiff is indicating that the reduction came because of, or if the defendants, the reduction would take place and the defendants were to pay the propane but had somehow not done that. And so therefore he considered, as his words are, he considered the agreement void. I have to say when the court analyzes that, the plaintiff's position makes no sense. I don't know why I would give a reduction in rent for somebody to pay me another bill or outlaid cash. It, it, that just doesn't make any sense. 
Um, what I think is, is that there was some dispute between the parties and the court would find that was more along the lines of what the defendant is claiming. And I find that their, their statement regarding that is correct. I don't believe that this propane was of such an issue that it would require the rent to go down. If one's not paying what in effect may be a utility, why would I reduce their rent so that they could pay me that? They, they, again, that makes no sense to me. Um, and so the court believes that for those two months that the defendants do owe $600 per month, but the $1,200 for those two months. I would indicate that um, <laughs> and I'll, I'll put it this way, my other reason for um, finding that regarding the reduction in rent is the same confusion that comes from the lease itself. The lease itself this is why people should probably have attorneys draft leases for them in full and fully understand its implications because that lease leases that whole premises, <laughs> that whole address is leased. So there's that. So the court does believe that they owe that $1,200. The Yes, ma'am. Sorry, we did fulfill that in February when we paid January, February, March, and April to Mr. Samanak. So you paid the twelve hundred. We paid twenty four hundred dollars to him for those four months and a fifty percent reduction. Got it. Okay. So we've already satisfied. You already that. paid that. Got it. The son-in-law Harvey Proctor came. To I don't need to know all of that. Sorry, she answered my question. Are you two married yet? Months. Three months you get married. So by that time, you're going to learn to keep your mouth shut after she speaks. I'm getting, I hope so. Perfect. All right. Maybe you'll get it. All right. Would, um, so that I want to make sure I'm clear, does plaintiff agree that that 600 was paid? Well, Your Honor, I'm not looking for full argument and just saying. Did they pay the rate at 600 for those months? But for those two months, but if you look back at January, you know, $600 in January forward. I'll take that as a yes, I'm done. So I don't really need to do anything with that because I think that they fulfilled the 600. The, def the plaintiff himself stated that whatever that agreement was, he just said they didn't fulfill and then unilaterally decided that they had breached the agreement and so now is going to charge them. I, it can't work that way. And it won't work that way. And the court's not going to enforce that to happen. Um, particularly when now he's here attempting to try to sue for the propane that he wanted them to pay, which some of that, quite frankly, given the lease, they don't owe. Now comes the really in this case, well, let me just deal with one other issue. So I've dealt with the rent. Quite frankly, I believe that the plaintiffs, the defendants have satisfied the rental provision as outlined and as amended by the parties. As to the electric, they admit that they owe the electric, just so that we're all clear. In regard to the painting, I'm gonna say this, and I'm gonna to try to put it as gently as I can. I have some issues regarding credibility from the plaintiff's side. And the issue that I have regarding that credibility is, is that it was very clear that the court was led to believe that there had been some outlay of cash. And I will have my recorder go back about payments that he made in the amount of $1,700. Not true. I don't have a receipt here from Menard. I don't know if that's paid, but I certainly have questions about the plaintiff's credibility to this court. 
It wasn't until later that it turns out there was no payment in part on this paint job that it was credit because that person owed him. That's a whole different scenario than to say, I have paid this money. And I think it was quite honestly a direct attempt to mislead this court as to what was actually transpiring. And so I don't believe that plaintiffs owe anything for any painting. When I look at that provision, one of the ways to interpret that provision regarding alterations and decorations and because of the last portion that everything then belongs to the landlord, if it were a decoration, decorations don't belong to the landlord typically they belong unless well until such time as they become a fixture to the premises that's when they become the landlord's property otherwise they could be removed by the tenant so theoretically under that provision had they hung a painting in the place it all of a sudden belongs to the landlord i don't think that that's the intent i also don't know what occurred with this painting but doesn't really matter to me I think, quite frankly, that the, the plaintiff lied to the court that, or at least misled the court or tried to mislead the court as to what he paid. And I'm having no part of that. And I'm not going to award any of the $1,700, anything for the painting um, in that regard. With regard to the propane. The propane amount which is, and again, this is why people should have leasing agreements at least looked over um, by attorneys regarding this. At least once a year, presumably, there is this purchase of propane. Now, I mean, it's just it's rather clear. Propane shall be purchased by the landlords once per year and shall be reimbursed by the tenants as soon as possible each year, but not later than the 31st of December of the year propane is purchased. So... <laughs> I can understand what plaintiff intends to do or is trying to do with reference to that propane, but he's stuck with his leaks. He's stuck with his document. He's negotiating parts. I mean, it's a very strange thing because according to the language here, I mean, I understand they measured it at the beginning. There's supposed to be this other credit at the end, whatever. The only thing by the terms of this lease, the only amount that the defendants would have to pay would be the amount paid in 2023. And they owe that. Um, we can talk about credits, we can talk about whatever. None of that matters realistically, right? And the reason why this is a bad way to do it is because the next tenant is really the one that benefits from what you've done. That's part of the problem. But that next tenant also could have had a deficit to what you've done. The fact is you guys didn't use enough propane to make it even for you. That's really what happened. And maybe that's the risk in having this type of an agreement. I don't know if that was the intent of the parties. I'm just taking the plain language of what's there. That propane bill. So what they owe is just the propane and only the propane purchase during 2023. And that is an amount of
they paid 1400 of that. So the net effect of that is, I got my math correct here, is, is that there is $337.34 owed. Whether you left propane in, what you had in, not part of what I'm looking at here um, in this case. So they owe the plaintiff that amount. Plus, Emily, you're going to have to help me with my math here. 293.66. I'm actually going to come to an even number. I hit one. Yep. So the plaintiff owes or the Defendants owe to the plaintiff $631 in utilities and propane. They have a security deposit. While I thought maybe there might be an issue with the doubling of the security deposit, um, they haven't complied with the part of the Landlord-Tenant Relationship Act regarding the uh, security deposit in terms of the notification, the written notification, which can occur in different ways now, but the written notification or forwarding address. They may have known where they may have known any of that, but um, I don't think that's been done. And that, neither do I think it's properly been pled, although it becomes an issue in the case. But 1200 minus 631. Five sixty nine. Five sixty nine. All right. So the net effect of all of this, after hearing all of the testimony, is that defendants owe plaintiff six hundred thirty one dollars. There's a security deposit of twelve hundred dollars. The court's going to order that the I won't put it in the form of a judgment. I'll put it in the form of an order that if not paid within what would be fifteen days that it would then become a judgment which the defendants could enforce that the plaintiff must pay to the defendants $569. That's the judgment of the court. Counsel for the plaintiff will prepare for it. Okay, Your Honor, just so, so I'm clear in this now, there's also the cost of $190. You have to prevail on your claim. Pardon me? I'm not going to award costs. I don't think they, I don't think you prevail. Well, we have the filing fee and we have the service fee and the motion fee. How much do you want to cost counsel? Okay. So you're saying we're not entitled to the. I did. I am not awarding costs, but if what, what do you have as the total amount of the cost? We have because quite frankly, I think counsel. This matter should have been resolved between the parties somehow and or another and has been an absolute waste of time. Your Honor. For all parties. I practiced law for 49 and a half years and I've settled every case that could be settled. These people thought they were over. I don't, I don't care why, because I now rendered my decision, counsel. Okay. I'm just letting you know. I think it was a waste. I just think it could have been resolved somehow or how much are your costs, counsel? The costs are $190 for a service fee, motion fee, and filing fee. Parties will split that cost in the case. You take $100 off of whatever I said is owed, and then we're done. So it'll be $469 coming. I'm done, folks. Can I ask one question? So sorry, Probably not, but go ahead. Is our, I just want to know, are we paying him anything, or is he paying us? Or He's right? got to pay you $469. If he doesn't pay it within 15 days, it will be transformed into a judgment that you can enforce. Okay. Okay. So that nobody has a judgment against. Thank you. Thank you, Judge.